Hi everybody, this is Gio, and welcome back to my channel. Today's story is called Carmel Macchiata. I come to the Java Dive every weekday because he's there. A little over six feet tall, black hair styled professionally, green eyes that seem to laugh, and a black business suit. His pocket always held the nicest pair of sunglasses. He's that age that could be 23 or 28. He's not a college kid like me. He had that confident edge when he talked to anybody. I come here every weekday because he's here. I only know him by large caramel macchiato with double shot espresso and almond milk because that's what the barista called out like today. I took my usual seat in the back, in the shadows, so I can pretend to work on my laptop and look at him. He arrived a little after nine, right on time. Like every day, he carried a newspaper, Wall Street Journal, I think. He walked through the door, loosening his tailored jacket and sliding it off. He loosened his tie and opened his collar by two buttons. As he was walking to the counter, I made sure I could see his mouth so I could read every word he said. He said, I want a large coffee, plain, with a squirt of hazelnut and a large caramel macchiato with double shot espresso and almond milk and two mocha delight cinnamon rolls. He must be meeting somebody. Lucky person. Today, I'm not pretending to work. I actually have a paper to write for English. They don't like how I write because English is hard for me. I don't understand punctuation and grammar and how they relate to writing. I guess I would if I could actually hear it. It's because I speak a different language than everybody around me. American Sign Language is my native language because I've spoken it all my life. I have a birth defect in my ears. They didn't develop. I was born deaf, and any kind of hearing aid won't work for me. Being deaf doesn't slow me down, but it can get lonely. The essay I'm writing has to do with a five-paragraph format stating why I like or don't like football. But I'd rather think about somebody else. Carmel Macchiato, that's what I call him, took his usual seat and waited for the coffees. A few minutes later, the barista called them out, and Carmel picked them up and set them on the table. I didn't have much time since he was meeting somebody. Taking a deep breath, I walked over to him. Hi, I signed. I'm Todd. Carmel looked up, his eyebrows furrowed, and he stared at my hands. I'm sorry, he said. I don't understand sign language. That's okay. I can read lips sometimes, I said. I should have expected this. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Carmel gave me a sad smile. Say again? I'm Todd, I said, slowing the motions down. I want to talk to you. I'm sorry, Bob, Carmel Macchiato said. I don't understand. Just a minute, I signed, and went back to my laptop. I had a notebook in my backpack and a pen somewhere. Maybe that would help. When I turned... A woman took the seat opposite Carmel. He'd never been here with a woman before, or a man. It was only him. They began talking, but I didn't pay close enough attention to see what they were talking about. My chance had failed. I had to get to class, but this wasn't over. As I walked out, I waved at Carmel. He seemed like he was about to say something, but I beat him to it. I signed. I'll see you tomorrow. He waved and said, Bye, Bob. Since he had trouble understanding me, I didn't expect him to understand me now. Tomorrow, I would come prepared with a paper and a pen. The next day, I arrived a bit earlier to make sure I was set up. Coffee, laptop, notebook, pens, I think I had everything. I waited. Nine arrived. 
Carmel Macchiato was late. He'd never been late before. By 9.15, I had to pack up my stuff and head to the bus. Carmel came in, hair not as perfect and smudges on his suit. He went straight to the barista and ordered. Then he saw me. Hi, Bob. Bad morning. I'll see you tomorrow. I nodded and signed. Okay. The barista said something, but I couldn't see his lips. Carmel Macchiata turned back to me. Todd. Sorry. The next day, Carmel Macchiata arrived early, ordered his usual and a second cup, then walked to my table. He set the drinks down and signed, Hi. I nodded and signed, Hi, back. That's all I know, Carmel said. Can I join you? Yes, I signed. Have a seat. Are you expecting someone? He shook his head, so I wrote down the same question. He nodded. Too long of a story for one piece of paper. Can you teach me to talk with my hands? I wrote, Alphabet. For the next ten minutes, I taught him to fingerspell, though he forgot many signs. But we did accomplish something. I pointed to me and fingerspelled T-O-D-D. He pointed to himself and fingerspelled R-E-E-D. I shook my head and quickly wrote, I know you by another name. I fingerspelled slowly so he would understand. C-A-R-A-M-E-L. Carmel. My coffee? he asked, smiling. I nodded. The woman walked up and said something. Reed got up and held the chair for her. With their heads turned, I couldn't tell what they were saying. He pointed at me and said, This is my friend. Then fingerspelled T-O-D-D. Todd. Then he fingerspelled M-A and forgot the sign. I should know this. Don't show me. It was time for my bus. I signed. I have to catch my bus. Both of them looked at me as if I were from another planet. I pointed at myself, then made my fingers run across the table, then fingerspelled B-U-S. Reed laughed, then nodded. He fingerspelled T-O-M-M-O and got stuck. I helped him out by showing him the R. The next day, we both arrived at the same time. He signed, hi. I was a bit more dramatic. I fingerspelled H-E-L-L-O. Hello. Reed had to think about that one for a moment, then copied the letters with his hand. Then his face lit up and he nodded. As I took a table, I glanced up to see Reed ordering two coffees. I guess his friend was joining us today. I got behind Reed in line, then he pointed back at the table and said, I'm buying. I signed thanks, before I realized he probably didn't know what that meant. We took a seat and went over his fingerspelling again. I showed him some basic signs, then wrote a question. Was that your wife? Reed wrote, No, sister going through bad divorce. What did you want to talk to me about the other day? I wrote quickly and bit my lip, not daring to look at him directly. Would you go on a date with me? Reed read. He signed, yes. Then he fingerspelled B-U-S. Bus? What did he mean? Oh no, bus. I had had so much fun talking to Reed that I had forgotten the time. I stared at my phone. The bus left five minutes ago. If I hurried, I could catch one that got me close to the university, but I'd still have to run just to be late to my class. Sorry, I signed. Reed didn't know very many signs, but how could I tell him I had to leave? I pointed at myself, then made my fingers run across the table, then pointed at the door. Reed took my hand. He pointed at himself, then made like his hands were holding a steering wheel, then pointed at me. Reed fingerspelled C-A-R, car. I signed, thank you. With Reed's help, I got to class early. Before I left his car, I scribbled my number on a scrap of paper and handed it to him. Reed smiled and slowly said, I'll text you mine. I'll see you Monday for our next date. Getting coffee with someone was a date? I guess so. Monday morning, I got a text while walking to Java Dive. On my way, 
bringing Mary. Order our coffees. I'll pay. Mary has plain coffee. I got the table set up, the coffees ordered, and had pulled out a hard copy of the essay I was working on. My teacher had scribbled marks all over it, mostly about punctuation. Periods and commas seemed so random. And who decided why some words have so many extra letters? I mean, L-I-T-E versus L-I-G-H-T. I hated English. Somebody tapped me on the shoulder. Reed was here, and Mary. He looked at my paper, at all the marks, then picked it up and read it. I took it back, I signed. Sorry, English is hard for me. Reed didn't know those signs yet. I pointed at the paper, then fingerspelled H A R D. Hard. Reed nodded, then looked back. Mary walked over, carrying our coffees. Hi, Todd, she said. I gave her a smile and signed, Hi, M A R Y, Mary. It's nice to see you again. She looked at Reed, and he translated. I nodded at him and signed, Good. Reed gave me a thank you. Mary looked at us both, then smiled a little. Reed, it's good to see you smiling. She turned her head, and I missed the rest of the sentence. The light caught a darker area around her eye. A bruise, hidden by makeup? I looked at Reed, then at Mary. I made a circle around my eye and pointed at Mary. I signed, what happened? Mary's hand went to her eye. Todd's very observant, Reed said, and he's good at lip reading. Tell him what happened. Are you sure, Mary said? I leaned in and signed. Did somebody hit you? Neither of them would understand those signs. I made a fist and pretended to hit my eye, then pointed at Mary. He's not a bad person, Mary said. I still... Something, something, something. Run of bad luck and made some mistakes. He's something, something. Slow down, I wrote. When you speak fast, it's hard to understand. Mary nodded. Why are you still together, I signed. She didn't know what I meant. Neither did Reed. I texted Reed the question. He showed Mary. I left, Mary said, lowering her face so I couldn't see her lips. I tapped the table so she looked up, and then I gestured, my eyes to her eyes. Sorry. He got so angry at me that I went back. I shouldn't have. But where else can I go? I already told her about the shelter, Reed said. But Mary never listens to her younger brother. Are there kids involved? I signed. We hadn't talked about the sign for children, but Reed understood what I meant. No, Reed said. He never wanted any. How did you understand that? Mary asked. I guess I'm getting the hang of it, Reed said. I gave him a double thumbs up, then tapped my wrist. I know. You have to get to class. Do you mind if I drop you off again? I signed yes, and gave him a quick smile. The next day, it was just the two of us. I surprised him by getting his coffee. He surprised me by completely signing our conversation. How are you? Reed signed. Fine. I signed back. How is school? Fine. How is work? Fine. Reed signed. How is Mary? Bad. Tell me, I signed. I don't know the signs, Reed signed. Then talk. Mary left him again last night. He was drunk, said some bad things. I think he hit her again. I fingerspelled P-O-L-I-C-E, police. Reed had to make the letters himself before he understood the word. She wouldn't let me call them. She stayed with you? Last night. I don't know what she is planning today. I'm sorry, I signed. It must be H-A-R-D. Hard. Like your paper, Reed said. Let me look at it. I pulled it out and waited as he read through it. Writing is hard for you, Reed said. I had to use the phone to text him what I wanted to say, because he didn't know the signs yet. Writing is easy, but all the rules make it hard. I don't understand why things have to be a certain way. I don't know how to do them either. When he finished reading, Reed paused a moment, then texted, I'll make a deal with you. You help me learn to sign, and I'll help you with your papers. We don't have a lot of time in the morning, so what if we met here on Saturday, too? I signed, yes, 
I'd like that. Then I added the bent forefingers tapping that meant friends. Reed repeated it. Friends. Our first Saturday, Reed didn't wear a suit but jeans and a green flannel shirt. We spent an hour in Java Dive going over my English and his sign language. We both wanted to go outdoors, so we got a refill and went for a walk. Signing, holding coffee, lip reading, walking, texting. I don't know how we did it, but somehow we managed to keep talking. We ended up at the steakhouse. Is this a date? I signed. It's turning into one, Reed signed back. Can you hear at all? Only very loud noises, I signed. But at Reed's odd look, I fingerspelled L-O-U-D-N-O-I-S-E-S. Loud noises. He mimicked the symbols with his hand, slowly reading them, then leaned forward, nodding. I thought you were completely deaf. I am in my left ear, and almost completely in my right ear, I signed. Then Reed gave me an odd look and made some interesting signs. What is the sign for K-I-S-S? My eyebrows shot up, and a trickle of a smile escaped. Was Reed flirting? I think I would like that. I showed him the sign. I touched the corner of my lips and then my upper cheek. May I kiss you? Reed signed. I nodded. It lasted two seconds, but it got my heart jumping as if I just had a double-shot espresso with extra caffeine. Somehow, language was no longer a barrier between us. Throughout the meal, we signed or texted, wrote notes. He spoke, I lip-read, and we had no problem communicating. When we left the restaurant, we left a dozen napkins covered in scribbled words, and we were holding hands. Reed signed friends, but kept tapping his fingers together. Maybe he was trying to say, better friends? Or, I signed back, boyfriends? Reed smiled as he repeated the sign and kissed me again. A kiss meant the same thing in any language. Reed's phone vibrated. He answered it. But because the phone partially hit his mouth, I couldn't tell what he was saying. He stiffened and stopped smiling. The lightness in his attitude vanished. What's wrong? I signed. Reed didn't answer. I don't normally vocalize, but I needed to get his attention. What's wrong? I don't think Reed had ever heard my voice before, because he stared at me. That was Mary. Her husband found her at my place. I grabbed his hand and pulled him back to Java Dive and his car. Reed went at least 20 miles above the speed limit all the way to his apartment. I'd never been there. Three-story building, 12 units per building, each with a balcony, 10 buildings surrounding a swimming pool. He pulled into a spot below one of the buildings and turned to me. Stay here. Then he was gone. I don't follow rules very well. Ask my English teacher. I followed. Reed lived in a third-floor place, and he leapt up the stairs three at a time, then into his door, apartment number 11. The door closed. I couldn't tell what was going on. I tried looking into the balcony, but except for an occasional head, I didn't know what was happening. Then Reed was on the balcony. I think he was shouting. At the angle, I couldn't tell what he was saying. He noticed me and said, Trouble. He fingerspelled, C-A-L-L-P-O-L-I-C-E. Call police. I whipped out my phone and texted 911. My name, Todd. I am deaf. There is fight. My boyfriend's apartment. Send police. Sorry, I bad at English. Almost immediately, I received location. I looked around. No street signs, but each building had a number. The complex had a name out front. I ran to look. I texted, number 11, 580, Hollywood Greens, they would never understand that, because I couldn't. Reed needed help. I had to do something. I ran upstairs and pounded on Reed's door. The door opened, but it wasn't Reed. It was a man I'd never seen before. His right arm was hidden behind the door. He said, what do you want? He must be Mary's husband. I wanted to get Reed out of there, but I couldn't say that. Think, Todd, you're bad at English, but you're good at everything else. I signed... His head tilted, and his eyebrows lowered. What? He didn't understand. I vocalized, too. 
I am here to pick up clothes for the deaf school. It gave me time to look in. Several broken dishes lay on the floor. The glass top on the coffee table was broken. Bits of glass sparkled on the carpet. What are something, 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 something deaf? Go something, something. He spoke too fast. I couldn't understand him. I kept signing because the longer he focused on me, the better chance Reed had of figuring out what to do. Reed walked up so I could see his mouth and gave me a little nod. Deaf? And it's Saturday? I promised a friend from the deaf school to donate some clothes and things. They're having a charity auction or something. He's here to pick them up. I nodded, vocalized, and signed at the same time. We are having an auction to earn money for a trip to Washington, D.C. for the deaf students. Something, something, heard something, something, thing, the man said. I wish he would slow down. I can't read his lips that fast. Reed is always doing stuff like that, Mary said, walking to the door. Her cheek was wet, and she was pale. The husband turned away for a moment, and Reed spoke. I don't think he used his voice because nobody else seemed to notice. Did you call the police? I nodded. He fingerspelled G-U-N. Gun. Mary, help me get some clothes from the closet. What something something? The husband asked and turned away. The fastest way to get him to leave. Reed left my view after that. I'm pretty fast when it comes to texting. Sometimes it's the only way I keep in touch with the world. It would only take a second. All I had to do was reply to the emergency services text. Nobody was looking. I sent, Man have gun in number 11. They had to understand that. But with the weird numbers I sent before, they wouldn't find us. What do I do? A minute later, Reed dumped a bunch of suits and shirts into a couple of garbage bags, plus some old books and exercise gear. Reed set a bag by me and mouthed, Get out of here. I pointed at Reed. I can't leave my sister. Go. Mary brought another bag to the door. The husband stepped into view, and for a moment, the pistol was visible. I hadn't been afraid until then. Part of me hadn't believed how serious this could be. The sight of the pistol made it serious. I inhaled and stopped signing. Reed must have noticed that I was scared because he said, It's okay. My phone vibrated and lit up. Incoming text. The phone was still in my hand. Lighting up. The husband guy saw it. Something, something you, the husband said. He stared at me, at my phone, at the incoming message. Understood, there is a gun involved. Please get to safety. You something, the something, something, the husband yelled and turned around. Run, Reed pushed me. I grabbed Mary's hand and we ran down the stairs, two at a time. Something heavy thudded on the stairs behind me, more heavy footsteps. Boom, boom, a piece of the concrete stairs chipped near me. He was shooting at us? I leaped from the stairs, running as hard as I could. Mary behind me, our hands separated. I looked back. Something grabbed me and pulled me sideways and we fell to the ground. I struggled and vocalized, no, no, no. Someone grabbed my hands and forced me to look at them. A policewoman signed. You're safe. What has happened? I couldn't catch my breath. Somebody held me up. I signed as fast as I could. The policewoman translated for someone. Then I signed, Help read, please. Time blurred. The interpreter asked me questions. I showed her the texts. Every minute I looked to see if Reed was coming down the stairs. He didn't. Two police officers brought a man down the stairs in handcuffs. I folded my arms and looked for Reed and Mary. Mary spoke with another officer, but her back was turned, so I didn't know what she said. I signed to the interpreter, Where's Reed? Did he get hurt? Everyone is safe, she signed. Let me ask you a few questions. A little while later, Reed stood on the balcony, talking to the police. I blew a breath out, and my shoulders sagged. Reed saw me and signed, Are you okay? A little scared, Are you okay? Yes, I think you saved our lives. Thank you coffee's on me for at least a month. The police officer said something to Reed, then looked down at me. He waved. I waved back. The officer went inside, but Reed signed, I'll be down in a few minutes. Wait for me, boyfriend. Only if you promise to kiss me again, I signed. Reed wasn't the only one who could flirt. Reed smiled and signed, okay. The police interpreter shook her head and smiled.